Hey, serious. Thank you very much. An ordinary pack of playing cards. So good evening, my name's Neil. <laughs> it's exciting to be here. I, uh, well, I learned two important things this week, ladies and gentlemen. First thing I learned was that a breast screening isn't. I think I caused a bit of a scene down the clinic. <laughs> <laughs> With my popcorn. <laughs> and the second thing that I learned was that if you were walking down the street and somebody's walking towards you, if, as that person draws level, if you just go, freeze! <laughs> They do. <laughs> so give that a shot, my friends, because it is unreasonably funny. <laughs> I did get an unnecessary kick out of that, destroying people's days for no reason. Although I got my comeuppance, I was in the bus coming here tonight, and I fell asleep on the bus, and I was woken up by a woman sitting next to me, yapping into her mobile phone. And she went, I'll be home in 15 minutes, and hung up. And she woke me up, and I was cross. And seized with a burning desire to kidnap her. <laughs> Just to prove the bitch wrong. <laughs> You know, we've all done it. <laughs> Take her off to the woods, tie her to a tree. <laughs> Stick a dynamite up the fanny. <laughs> Light the fuse, stand well back, get her phone, last number redial. She will not be home <laughs> in 15 minutes. She may be home in 15 days, in 15 pieces. Because <laughs> that's how I roll. I'll tell you a few, th few more things about myself. I've got one nectar point. And Windows 7 was my idea. But before I go, I thought I'd do more. Do you want to hear my new material? Yeah. It was a Christmas present, so it's still topical. <laughs> now, in case you're having trouble placing my accent, Comedy Store, I'll give you a little hint. It is, in fact, what is known as posh Glaswegian. <laughs> yes, which is why you couldn't place it. <laughs> Last time I checked, there were 12 of us. <laughs> I was back home for Christmas and for New Year. I spent New Year's in Edinburgh and obviously Hogmanay in Scotland. It is incumbent upon me to wear the kilt. Thank you. There was a lot of that. <laughs> and I should say to the ladies in the room, yes. Because <laughs> that's just common sense. But... Beyond that, I should say that when I wear the kilt, I do, of course, wear it as it's meant to be worn. I think you know what I'm saying. Sporran to the front. No, I was a true Scotsman. Now, I don't think that a Scot in his national dress, not that it's a fucking dress, in his national capital should have to deal with that shite from the tourists. Because even now, in the coldest months that Scotland has to offer the world, there are still some diehard tourists padding the beat in Edinburgh, chiefly North Americans, with their matching rainwear <laughs> and their inspired questions. Where's the castle? There. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
turn the fuck around, you cretin. <laughs> and there are two basic forms to the same dull as fuck question every time. Either it's what have you got under the kilt, or it's what are you wearing under the kilt, and you just want these people to fuck instantly off. And this <laughs> is what I do, and it's pretty much guaranteed this good adult pronto. And they come up and say, hey there, man, hey there, buddy. They're normally called Brad or Chad or something <laughs> equally hopeless. And I say, hey there, man, hey there, buddy, what you got under the kilt there? I said, a mediocre penis. <laughs> and that way, no matter what their inclination might be from a sexual perspective, they don't tend to hang around. <laughs> Whereas if they come and say, hey there, man, hey there, buddy, what you wearing under the kilt? I say, lingerie. <laughs> and they don't typically hang around. And if they do, I don't. <laughs> so before I moved down from Scotland to make a go of this comedy thing full time, my previous day job when I worked back up in Glasgow, this is quite true, folks. I used to work for the BBC in their complaints department. <laughs> job security. <laughs> And not just for Scotland, BBC Information Correspondence Unit, this is full title, was actually based up in Glasgow, but we answered letters from the length and breadth of the United Kingdom, which is fantastic, because most of the folks that write to the BBC to complain are a retired colonel who lives in Kent. <laughs> but they are mainly folks down here in the southeast, sort of Kent, Middlesex, Sussex, the home counties, that part of the world. They have no idea the letters are being answered in Scotland. They get very cross, they go, Dear sir, I'm a licensed pal. <laughs> you know, they all sound like Colonel K from Danger Mouse. And they get very cross. BBC Broadcasting House, you know, London, throw it in the post, forget about it. It lands on a desk in Glasgow a week later, and one of my former colleagues answers it, which is priceless, because quite a lot of these folks down in this part of the world are writing to the BBC to complain about all the goddamn Scottish accents on network television. <laughs> and some of these inspired fuck sticks have put their phone number... <laughs> ..on the letter. So we just, you know, give them a wee ring to confirm we received their correspondence. We used to call it a courtesy call. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> That's just a BBC. <laughs> We've received your letter. It's a wee shame. <laughs> You'd been like Scottish accent on that telly. <laughs> Bagpipes in the background. <laughs> Please be assured your comment to be no. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Registered. <laughs> and shat on. <laughs> Freedom! So that was always fun. <laughs> but, you know, if I'd had to stay with the BBC, you know, if I'd ended up going down that route, my ambition would have been to rise through the ranks because my ambition, my other ambition, would have been to be an announcer. You know? Continuity guy, the guy that comes on between programmes and says, I'd now want a BBC one, just to get to my last day on that job. Because your last day on the job, folks, any job, what do you do? You fuck about. <laughs> And think about the power you would have on your last day on the job as a BBC announcer. Announcing things that don't even exist. And now on BBC One, kittens on fire. <laughs> Over on BBC Two for the next 45 minutes, this noise. <laughs> and the last one. But I'm kicked out the road once and for all, just to come on and say, and the BBC would like to warn viewers that the next programme contains the word shit and fuck. <laughs> but not cunt. <laughs> see, that's the cherry on top, you see. <laughs> Don't forget, folks, sex is not the answer. At least not to the question, how do I cure my gerbil's epilepsy? <laughs> Don't overthink that one. <laughs> and I'm going to leave you my grandpa's last words to me. I'm not speaking to you anymore.
Thanks for your time and attention, folks. Good night. Neil McFarlane, ladies and gentlemen.